Welcome to Monthly Money, where we take a look at someone's past month spending and the income that came in to see how that all comes together to meet their financial goals or overcome the financial obstacles that are standing in their way. My name is Caleb Hammer, and today we are meeting with Chai. Chai, how old are you and where are you based out of? Uh, hey, I'm Chi, like Tai Chi. Chi, damn it. <laughs> it's all good, it's all good. Yeah. Um, I'll just continue, right? Yeah. <laughs> So I'm based out of uh, West Hartford, Connecticut, and I'm 25 years old. What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a software developer. What do you make a year? Uh, 75. 75? That's pretty low for a software developer, isn't it? Uh, maybe. I, I don't really think so. I'm quite happy. I think I kind of, um, I used to work at a restaurant. And I kind of did like a self-taught thing. I have a college degree, but I just didn't study computer science. So I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy for this starting point. Just started about six months ago. So. Oh, you started six months ago. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what'd you do before that? Uh, a number of things, but mainly I was running food at a restaurant. Um, oh, okay. So did you just recently graduate? No, I graduated in 2019. And then, uh, I was kind of chilling, hanging out and I, I started working at the restaurant in August of 2020. What took you so long to get your shit together? I, I wouldn't say I didn't have my shit together, um, but so I, I also do some social media stuff, which I, I, I really thought it was a good kind of, um, I was in a good rhythm with working at the restaurant and I would have time to do some social media stuff. Um, so, I mean, I was, I was really into that. It hasn't quite like taken off. Mm. It hasn't taken off at all, um, but that uh, I get, sorry. Hopefully, hopefully you can cut some of this out, like me stuttering everything. But um, so I guess I guess the reason I didn't have my together was because I didn't necessarily know exactly what I wanted to do. Um, so so until I kind of saw that this uh, kind of self-taught path of being a software developer was possible, um, I was kind of just in in uh, no man's land, pretty much. What was your degree in? I thought you said computer sciences. No, I got a degree in economics. And then I, oh. yeah. And I did some self taught coding stuff and I was applying for a lot of jobs and getting rejected a lot. And then I finally got a, a good opportunity. Do you have any student loans? I do not. How? Um, so I went to a pretty small state school um, and my mom works for like a sister school, another state school in the area. So I had some tuition waived right there. And then, I mean, my parents, uh, luckily, were, were able to cover uh, the rest of it. And I hope to, I, I do hope to pay them back for whatever, whatever it is. If you... Do you put everything on the Discover card? Uh, Discover and Apple. Oh, and Apple. Okay. So with the Discover card, what's the balance on the Discover card? I don't see. It doesn't have it. Well, I think for the August or September that I sent you, it, it, it was kind of high. I, I know that I generally spend around $1,000 a month. Do you ever hold any credit card balances? No. Or I, I, I'll usually let the statement come in and then I'll pay it off in full. Yeah, but you never carry a balance. Okay. No, no, no. So doing some Uber tripping and Amazon purchases, Target, El Santo, nothing too crazy, some convenience stores, uh, Lyft ride, and just... Some and then yeah, there's a payment of 155 there. Then in your, your Apple Card, only 154 dollars there of current balance of which you pay off. Uh, previous monthly balance only 29 dollars. So and this looks like all grocery stores uh, for the most part. Lots of Trader Joe's. What's uh, AMK the Hartford Tower one? What is that? Uh, that's just uh, that's just like the lunch cafeteria at my office oh okay uh well you definitely go there a lot and then shake shack trader joe's but again not much so do you spend money in your checking account that i'm like not seeing reflected on these cards or how does your spending go uh it might be because i guess sometimes i'll pay my credit card off before the statement comes in i, I, I won't accumulate over the entire period i'll pay pay it down sometimes and then make sure it's completely paid off when the statement comes in so my utilization rate is maybe like lower than it actually could be. That makes sense. But mainly, mainly I'm spending just on, on that, on the, on the two credit cards. 
Now, in your Robin Hood, you have 11000 bucks in there. That's pretty sweet. It is split. Uh, you have 22% in Apple, which I'm sure has performed well in general, though. You know, I haven't looked at Apple in a bit. I know we're in a downturn, but we'll see. Uh, now, what is this Cleveland Cliffs 50% of your portfolio? What? <laughs> uh, I think I think I was on uh, Wall Street Bets, and I was convinced that that was a good idea, so... Oh, no, they convinced you into that, and that's half of your $10,000? Well, how has it been going? I have, I don't even know what this is. Uh, that's a, that's a, I, I, it's, it's some, uh, some iron manufacturing or steel manufacturing company. Um, I guess there was, I thought there was gonna be some type of, like, commodity boom. That was, there was a, that was a hypothesis a year plus ago. Well, how has it performed? Um, up and down right now, I'm down probably a good. 35%. So 35% on 50% of your portfolio. Do you do stuff like that a lot? Do you get into the wall street bet thing or was this a one time? Yeah, no, I think, I I think it was during the craze. It was around like the GameStop kind of craze. Um, But no, I generally, I generally do stay away from, from that, that type of uh, advice. I mean, I'll go for entertainment, but other than that, I'm not religiously following any, yeah, it's definitely entertaining, but yeah, ooh, putting that much in, it's crazy. And then still 22% in Apple. That's also a lot for just one stock. And then Nokia, I don't know, but 5% there. And Neo, I keep seeing Neo. Uh, I think that's a, <laughs> I think that's another like long-term hold, you know, in EVs where. What do you have against the S&P 500? <laughs> Nothing at all. Nothing at all. I've been very tempted. I know I should just do the, you know, low cost index funds and just hammer those in. Um, I have, I have yet, yet to do that. Okay. So, uh, we have your checking account here. I found it. Beginning balance, 3,889 ending balance, 1,897 with five, 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 three put in seven, three taken out. Why are you ending with $2,000 less? Um, so I think, I think in the month I gave you, I paid, like, I had to pay off my credit card a lot. I don't know if it was reflecting that or not. Um, well, if so, that means you're spending more than you're used to on your credit card. N- no. Um, if you had to spend, if you had to spend more from your checking account to pay off a credit card than usual, then you're spending more on your credit card or correct me. Okay. Maybe. Yes. I definitely did. I did. So I went to, I went to New York. It's just because I went to New York with a friend for his birthday and I put the, uh, I put like our drinks and our food for some club. We went on for like eight people on my card. Cause I was getting 5% cash back and I got paid from everybody else. Okay. You got paid. Well, wait, where's the payment? Because that again, I think that went to Venmo mainly and Apple pay and I didn't transfer it back in at that same, the same month. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. That makes sense. I do see some Zells. Um, but those, uh, well, it was Azel, and that was transferred out anyway. So, um, and again, yeah, you're just taking care of bills here, so really nothing too crazy. It's just uh, as I expected for the checking account. And you do have uh, T. Okay, so there's a couple different TDs. TD uh, saving account, eight thousand one hundred dollars. Is this meant for an emergency fund, or what is the purpose of this one? Um. So that was kind of, I think people were on Robinhood a lot. So actually I used to have more in my Robinhood, but I sold something. I forgot what I did. I sold a bunch of some, several stocks and I transferred a lot of that money into TD Ameritrade. But, but this is TD, this is TD save. So 8,000. It's a TD savings. That's what it says. Simple savings, 8,000 bucks. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Sorry. That. I'm so sorry. So yeah, that, that is just my savings account. Yes. And it, 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 I transferred money out of that into a high interest, uh, savings account, high yield savings account. Oh, oh, very cool. And what's the intent behind this? Is it an emergency fund or what? So in the high yield savings that I, that you don't have, it is an emergency fund, but the one that you're seeing right now that has 8,000, that's now down to like 2000 is just going to be probably, I'm going to save up for a car or, you know, deposit on a, on a, new apartment or something. So how much is in your high yields right now? 6,000? Uh, right now I have about 7,500. I put in 500 every two weeks. So a thousand a month. What's your monthly rent? 
so I'm living with my parents right now, which is kind of a big thing. So one of my one of my biggest goals is to is to move out. Uh, hopefully early 2023. Okay, so in a few months. The logistics of that. Okay. Um. What part? Where do you want to live? It's a damn good question. Oh, <laughs> early 23 is uh, like. <laughs> Almost tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm really torn between moving like away right now. I'm, I'm in Connecticut, and I was thinking about moving to Charlotte, North Carolina. Otherwise, I'll just move out in the area because I know that Charlotte would come with a lot more of you know moving expenses and transporting things and whatnot. Well, you have a good baseline set up to be able to do something like that if you wanted to. We'd probably once you get. Uh, rent to get your emergency fund to at least 10,000. But by if you're aiming for early 2023, you should be able to um, cash flow your move really easily and have that baseline $10,000 to get started. I don't think that would be an issue if you wanted to live in Charlottesville. Yeah. What's holding you back? Uh, I've lived here for 25 years. It's kind of lame, but like it's what I'm very comfortable with. So I, I am trying to get over kind of, you know, the, a big it would be a big, be a big deal yeah i lived in michigan for 23 years and you know i've been in austin for four years uh it's definitely an adjustment at first but you know you got to live your life at some point and there's nothing is saying you can't visit home and nothing is saying that you can't ever move back home either so um if that's your big thing holding you back i would take the plunge yeah, yeah. i like that now you do have some money into TD that you mentioned transferring from Robin hood. Uh, so in here, oh, I see where you got confused because the amount on both those are really similar. So 8,149 here. Let's see what this is. In. It's 95% in stocks. So why did you pick this portfolio? I'm showing the portfolio on screen. What made you choose these different stocks? You seem to be very interested in the individual stock game. So, let's see. I know I probably have like, do I have like AT and T, uh, Palantir, a Vive, uh, Liquidating Inc, Bristol, Coca Cola, Exxon, Humble, Johnson and Johnson, uh, P Petroleum Corporation, Plantier Tech, Pepsi, and Realty Income Corp. Okay. So yeah. I, I think I think my my initial kind of plan with those, um, I was looking for like uh, dividend yielding stocks, mm -hmm. and so so that's that's what the majority of them are, um, and it was pretty much for me just you know going like I I I personally did not do any any uh, or too much research. I just kind of looked at hey what are like some solid dividend yielding stocks, and so I kind of built that up. All these individual stocks now equaling. Like eighteen thousand, like nineteen thousand dollars. So let's look at your Roth IRA and see if this balances it out a little better. It doesn't because it's only at ten thousand um, dollars. And let's see where that's put in. Oh, why again? Uh, you're in Facebook, Ford, DraftKings, AT and T, and Plantier again. So you don't own a single thing S and P five hundred based in Ford. So you have, you have. You have an options play on Ford right now, or at least at the time of this statement. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Kind of stupid. Twenty nine thousand dollars all in individual stocks. You don't have anything in the the world of any kind of mutual funds or anything. Why? Uh, because I'm a genius. You know, everything I pick, touch turns to gold. You know, so. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I honestly, I, I really would like to kind of rebalance my portfolio. Um, but at the same time, I, I I do feel like if there was a time to have these kind of stupid, more riskier, you know, picks, right, it would be right now. Um, but yeah. I, I do see the value in it. There's some justification behind that that I can see, but also this is also the best time to start getting compound interest at a 10% annual basis starting now until when you're retired in the S&P 500. I have nothing against individual stocks. I just wouldn't have in your overall market portfolio, you know, non-real estate portfolio, I wouldn't have any like less than 25% as I've seen, you know, some good research recommending that 25% 
and less into individual more risky things, whether that be things like art, individual art holdings, or uh, individual stocks, or crypto. But you're 100% right now, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. How much do you invest on a monthly basis? Probably, I think I've slowed down in the last couple of months, but I know this year I've invested about 15000 in like the last nine months. Why have you slowed down? Uh, so I am, I'm looking to kind of save more that now I'm, now I'm doing a thousand. I'm doing 500 every two weeks to my high yield savings account to like, can get that to, you know, 10,000, 12,000 for emergency fund. And, um, uh, then moving out also trying to put it in my regular TD Ameritrade or TD, TD bank savings. And then I'm hoping to get into some business type venture that I'm saving up for as well. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I mean, once you start reinvesting, if you if you really want to hold on to these, okay, let's start putting everything else into just you know S and P five hundred based things as the most basic example. But just follow the market overall. Um, that would be what I would do. Where in your shoes, not official financial advice, I would just rebalance it out. So essentially. What you, you would, also what you could do is you could take so these are kind of split in thirds. Wait, what? Are, do you have a four hundred one k? Yeah, I have a four hundred one k too. How much is in it? Maybe like twenty five hundred, three thousand. Just started working and I contribute like nine percent, I think. What kind of fund is that in? Ooh. So I think the majority of it is, uh, I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's in, it's in like the target for the 2065 retirement. Maybe it's time to take, oh man, I'd rather you rebalance your Roth into something more S&P 500 based in the future. So I, especially since this is only in a few different stocks, maybe if you want to keep, you know, a lot of the stocks, Maybe uh, the TD brokerage account in the Robinhood, they kind of, you know, feel free to continue to ride if you really want to. Maybe get this Roth kind of transitioned more into an S&P 500 based thing and then continue to invest in, you know, that $6,000 a year. Um, and then, you know, more as well and then rebalance it and then just keep doing market-based things until those individual stocks within your TD brokerage and Robinhood are 25% of your account. And then feel free to, you know, do 75% of any market investments into general following the account funds. And then if you want to put 25% into those more stock plays, you can, but it might take a couple of years to rebalance there. But I'm not seeing like the world's on fire emergency scenario right now. So I don't think you have to go crazy. I would maybe look at rebalancing your current Roth, but um, I would just now focus on balancing the portfolio to that 75% market following and then having a little more fun in maybe a couple years again with those individual plays. I'm good with individual plays and now well, you're taking options. So, I mean, we're talking like we're taking some swing trades here. How much do you do that? Uh, I used to do a little bit more again back in the, you know, GameStop type era. Um, but not so much anymore. I, I've tried to like sell some covered calls um, on stocks that I have, you know, a couple hundred shares of. Um, and then actually I, I was, I was trading a little bit of the S and P 500 uh, last week options trading, which, which worked in my favor, but they say the first one's free. So I think I'm, I think I'm done from there. Well, just recognize this statistic. If you put money in the S and P 500, a hundred percent of people over the course of multiple decades, as long as they keep it in there, make 10% on average. Well, more than 80% of people who swing trade or day trade lose money. Yeah. I would rather be in the statistical majority of the people who are making 10% a year on average. Yeah, absolutely. No, me as well. Me as well. But I guess, I guess that kind of goes back. I, I do feel part of the reason, again, I kind of want to move out is because I know it would slightly potentially financially stress me out because i feel like i'm too comfortable not too comfortable i still feel like i'm I'm decently smart with my with my finances 
but I would just be a little bit tighter with them. Oh, yeah. I mean, you do fine. But that's because your expenses are pretty much nothing. So that's why what I'm beating you up on is just your portfolio management. Because when it comes to your, I mean, income versus spending on stuff, it's, it's actually not crazy. Uh, well, it's not it's not bad at all, in fact. Um, so you would definitely have to focus more on the budget world once you have rent and you have to take care of all of your groceries. Um, what does your car situation look like today? Uh, I kind of have a car. I mean, it's my parents. Uh, so if I was to move out, I would have to buy my own or just buy the one that I use from them. Okay. What's your plan around that? Cause that's all of a sudden a big added expense for early 2023. So personally, I don't give a shit about cars. I've seen a lot of people on your, on your channel, like go into debt for cars, but I, I fully intend on buying like a reasonably priced car and hopefully with all cash what's we what's reasonably priced eight thousand seven thousand okay because it's going to take you a bit to get to that additional if you have ten thousand in an emergency fund and then an additional seven thousand like if you well i don't know if i would liquidate any robin hood but if okay so where my thought is around that is i if there's nothing wrong with staying at home at all. There's nothing wrong with using uh, your parents. You know, our culture is very driven around 18, get kicked in the butt. But, you know, the majority of the cultures around the world, you know, stay at home, whatever, it doesn't matter. We're, we're kind of weird about that. So if you want to, that's fine. However, if it is important for you to have that more independent life, then we need to prioritize that in your life. And if liquidating some of your stock plays in order for you to get a car that unfortunately in America is pretty much necessary to survive, then, you know, maybe that is a play that we start to consider if your target is early 2023. Because again, early 2023 is in a couple months. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what, what are your thoughts around that? Honestly, I I would be very down with it. Like, I'm, I'm not opposed to uh, liquidating my Robinhood at all. In fact, I think I, I plan to do it at some point, or I, I thought about doing it um, to help me move out. Cause I want to, I've been, I've been trying to move out for, for, you know, probably a good year, year and a half now. Um, well, yeah. I mean, I also know people, I, I do not want to generalize you at all, but I also just know people where it's like, yeah, I'm going to move here, do this, move here, do this, move here, do this. And they kind of talk about it for a while. It never happens until you just do it. So figure out the plan and what it takes to execute it and then do it. I would not move if of the $10,000 emergency fund you have, you have to take into that to get a car at all. I would not do that. At some point, you might have to tap into an emergency fund to get a car in an emergency situation. But it's not really an emergency situation in that context because you borrow your parents and you're living at home. So I wouldn't sacrifice that security and sacrifice the emergency fund in order to get the car. But if you're able to liquidate or aggressively save for a few months and get something in that seven dollars $8,000 range... And then you still have that $10,000 in emergency fund and you're able to cash flow moving, which moving isn't as expensive as a lot of people make it out. Just, I mean, as a, what I assume as a single dude, um, it's not going to be crazy. You're going to rent a U-Haul and, you know, security deposits are annoying, but it's, it's not going to be insane. And, I mean, I could also look at, like, a cheaper car. I don't really know exactly what's going on in the car market right now. I just know that like the Kelly Blue Book value of my parents like Toyota Camry is about 775. It's it's hard. Honestly, your parents might be the only place where you get a fair deal in the current car market. Well, what a lot of people do who I've talked to, they're like, I'm like, okay, so why didn't you get a car that was like, you know, right around $10,000 or oh, it's impossible to find a car in $10,000 in this market. Okay, how many places did you look? I went to one dealership. Okay. Look all over private sale on all the markets available in your area. Private sale is great too, but you never just buy a private sale car. You get a car, take it to uh, a mechanic, and make sure the mechanic gives you the thumbs up that this car is going to be safe and reliable for years to come before you get that cheaper car. You never just get a cheaper car just to get a cheaper car. You get it checked out, but... If people are willing to look for a car like it's a job, you can find deals. This hardly feels like a deal compared to a couple of years ago, but it's still a deal compared to the insanity that is the middle to top of the market. Yeah, that makes sense. So 
I, I really hope you do the move if that's something you really want to do. Uh, if it's something you don't care about, then who cares? But if you really want to do it, I say, you know, just just do it. Um, make sure you're in a financially ready position, but I promise it's worth it. And if after a couple of years you don't like it, want to move home or closer to home, totally fine as well. No judgment there. Um, but if you want to do it, do it. And get this car, get that emergency fund good, and I think you're in a good starting spot in general. Do you have any final thoughts? Um, uh, only that I know I'm going to win that a thousand dollars, uh, for being one of the 50, 50, 50,000 subscribers. So <laughs> that's what I'm feeling. Nice, man. I'm loving it. <laughs> Thank you. For sure. Let Chi know what you think about his financial situation in the comments below. And if you have a financial struggle that you think I could help with, feel free to email me at castingcalebhammer at gmail.com, which is also found in the description below. Shout out to my four cups of coffee supporters, Badil Martinez, Mark Josh Bennett, Cleaning 06, Tyler Chong, Drew Smith, Timothy Williams, MIM, Jason Spriggs, Nicholas Daly, Tom LJ, Freedom, and Hans. Eight cups of coffee supporters making the dream come true. Joseph Strickland, Anthony, and Anonymous Supporter, and Sam V03. Subscribe and stick around for more. Thanks.